Hi guys, so I'm going to do a bit of an unboxing video today um, of what you see in front of me which is the Eagle Tree Vector flight controller and OSD. Um, now there's plenty of flight controllers on the market, the Vector isn't particularly new in fact, it's been out for almost best part of a year. Um, I haven't seen much of it in the UK to be honest and also if you go online there's not a huge amount of information about it on YouTube videos which is why I decided to do this. Um, basically you know you've got a lot of choices when it comes to flight controllers um, Fayotech do some good ones, obviously DJI if you've got multi rotors is a very commonplace one, um, APM 2.5 and 2.6 fantastic little things, uh, multi rotors have got you know KK boards, um, Nays, all of those. Um, for me, the reasons that I decided to go with an Eagle Tree one is because I've had previous experience with Eagle Tree products. Um, in particular, I have used this on my fixed wing aircraft. Uh, this is the Eagle Tree Guardian 2D straight 3D stabilizer. Now, this is literally just a stabilizer, it doesn't have return to home functions or anything like that. Um, the reason that I bought this was because I'm fairly new to fixed wing still, certainly compared to many people out there. Um, and this little device here gives you that lovely peace of mind to know that if you get yourself into a bit of trouble you can flick a switch the oh crap switch as flight test guys would say um, and the aircraft will return to level flight obviously it's going to continue in that that position it will fly away from you because it's not going to come home but the point is you can get yourself out of trouble if you've got enough sky to do so um, it's also got some other features. If you're a 3D pilot, you've um, got a fantastic ability to actually lock the aircraft in the position that it's at. So all of the control surfaces get locked out and you can actually hold the uh, the aircraft on the throttle. Uh, it's handy for a few different situations, but they're more advanced. The, the real key is that this was 50 quid. Uh, you can see the size of it and it is literally just as simple as plugging it into your receiver, um, plugging a couple of auxiliary ports to it and then you've just got to do a stabilisation and you, you plug and play, you're ready to go. You've got stabilisation gain so you can decide how hard and how twitchy it will uh, adapt but you can also program that via your um, transmitter so anyway that that's the main reason now the, the key thing with the Eagle Tree Vector is that the stabilization that's within it is using pretty much the identical method that the Guardian 2D 3D stabilizer works with um, for that reason I thought you know I know I like that I know I should like this when it's in operation the key is also of course that the Vector has so much more to offer than just a stabilizer um, so let's take a look in the box to begin with nothing particularly spruced up about the box but then again let's face it you don't really need anything uh, you get a sticker Facebook page a uh, bit of information about where to get manuals um, and that's pretty much it then you've got the vector itself so this is the actual flight controller as you can see it's fairly basic fairly slim line lightweight I haven't actually got the weight but I'll put that in the comments um, very well labeled so you can see clearly um, you know a nice sticker on there it's not going to peel away um, much better labeled than something like the NASA for example uh, the other thing that I should mention is that the manual is absolutely fantastic full color really detailed lots of pages a bit daunting um, when you first look at it but the key to this is that actually this is fairly plug and play if you want it to be but you can do so much customization with this particular flight controller that, that it really sort of sets it, I would say, along the same lines as the APM, but a little bit more user friendly in some respects. Um, and also the size and the weight of it, it's much less cumbersome um, and it does also have a built-in OSD and I'll go into that in a bit more detail. So that's the actual flight controller. You then get your GPS with compass, so that is an external compass module. Um, for those who have seen a, a NASA one or an APM one, um, this is a very compact little unit, um, very nice size, obviously it's got a nice label for the arrow. Uh, that sounds daft, of course it's got an arrow, I've bought an APM and it didn't have an arrow on it and that caused no end of problems, um, probably because I bought one off eBay, but there you go. Um, but the key is that it's got an arrow, you can tell where it's going to face, uh, it comes with a little clip um, and also let's just get underneath here, here's all your wiring gubbins, so this is the GPS mount, idea being that you've got this little clip here, that screws into the top of there and then GPS mount clicks in to this clip here. Makes it nice and removable, nice and positive and obviously if you've got a fixed wing aircraft you probably won't be using this mount, just stick it on there with velcro or something, probably something a little bit more solid. 
So anyway, that's that. And of course you also, much like the APM, um, you get yourself a power module. Now it's a really nice, neat, compact one. Um, I've got a Fayotech um, FY41 AP Lite, and the power module for that is massive and heavy. This is, you know, it's not perfectly lightweight, but this is really nice and compact. Uh, this does a 12 volt and a 5 volt output, which I'll go into more in a moment, um, and it can take up to a 6S battery, so that's quite important for people who are flying the slightly higher spec um, machines, especially the multi-rotors. Um, the Vector does cater for multi-rotor and it also caters for fixed wing, which is another reason that I've gone for it. I paid about £200 for it, which is quite expensive. It's it's around the similar sort of price bracket as something like a DJI NASA, but of course it's got fixed wing and multi rotor. You're not just combined, you know, fixed fix down to that. And again, the customization of it is is the main key that that, that really appealed to me. Um, right, so let's just go through these various wiring harnesses that you get with it. Nothing particularly complicated. This particular wiring harness here. This goes to your receiver. So we just simply plug that into here, so RX in, boom, plug that in, and then you've got nice labels on all of them. You've got your aileron, which has the power going to it, and the rest of them are all signal wires, uh, elevator, auxiliary, so you've got an aux channel. You've got a mode, that's for your mode switch, so you change your flight mode using that. Auxiliary channel is actually a secondary mode switch, which you can play about with. Uh, then you've got throttle rudder, standard uh, standard ones. Um, the other thing worth mentioning, um, unlike something like the APM, the Vector does support SBUS, which for Futaba people is quite key. Um, it also supports RSSI, um, so you can see how your signal strength is. Obviously, you have to be using a receiver that has RSSI, output available. Um, for me, I personally, I'm a Futaba man, I tend to be using the um, these little chaps here, the R2008 SB, um, but I also have Easy UHF and it is compatible with Easy UHF and the RSSI through that. Um, depending on your receiver will give you, you know, a, an element of, um, of choice on how much information you get for the RSSI, but that's something that a lot of people are finding quite important. For those of you who are watching this, you haven't got a clue what I'm talking about, RSSI basically gives you the ability of seeing what your signal strength is. So if you're doing long distance flight, you're flying away and you find out that your RSSI percentage is down to about 20%, you know there's a good chance you're going to have a brownout any moment. So turn around, come back, or better still, hold your aerial up, do something to try and get the signal better. Uh, so anyway, so it, it supports that. Um, so let's look at the other wiring harnesses we've got. We've got a very simple GPS one. Now, the, um, the Vector also has bus ports. Um, you'll see on the GPS there, bus ports here. Uh, that is very similar to the, um, the DJI NASA um, CAN bus in many ways. Obviously, a lot smaller connectors for those of you who have used them. Um, the idea is that you've got a GPS device, obviously, here through the bus port, but you can daisy chain out of the secondary bus port other units. Now, Eagle Tree, I believe they sell. Um, certainly a pitot tube so you can do airspeed uh, I believe they also do a th uh, an RPM a, um, an engine RPM uh, sorry motor RPM um, taco um, unit that goes into there so you've got a couple of options you can daisy chain a couple in there so that could be useful for those who really want to get lots of information um, and then the only other two um, wiring harnesses that we've got we've got this little one here which is an audio wiring harness now the Vector has voice commands um, that are available. Uh, if you want to use those voice commands you have to plug this little harness in um, to the audio port. Nicely labelled there, audio port. You then plug that in on the aircraft to your audio channel on your Video TX and that will send it down the airwaves so you can hear the voice commands. Um, how useful that is. I will have to see in the future. I'll have to give it a go. Um, and then the final wiring harness, which is the main one, is for the um, the overall power. So um, let me just grab that. So we've got your power module there. And you plug that into there. And what that provides is you've got, obviously, your battery goes in here. Your ESC then daisy changes off the back of this. Uh, this now provides both 12 volts and 5 volts available to use in a variety of different things. Now again you've got some nice labels here that for example is camera stroke mic and it's black and red that's a 12 volt 
because it's a red tab it's 12 the white one here is 5 volts so if you want to power your GoPro or any other 5 volt camera um, fat shark cameras for example they usually get powered from the the VTX but this will provide 5 volts to a fat shark 5 volt camera uh, which is a nice little addition there and obviously if you're going to use them you just uh, you just clip them up you can use the outputs these are literally just 12 volt raw output from that so you've got some auxiliaries if you want it and then what you've got is the loop for your video transmitter and camera so the idea is that you would grab your camera you plug in the power if you want it to um, do this you then plug in your video cable so the output of your camera goes into the video cable it goes into the vector via this port here Boom. so the camera signal goes through the vector OSD is put on top of it and then it is pumped out to the video TX via this port here nice and simple servo cables really you know not a complicated thing to put together like some of them um, that the FY41 AP I, I very much like it um, as a flight controller but the OSD side of things did get a little bit more complicated than than this now talking of the OSD the thing that is the real beauty of this is that you have a wonderful piece of software it doesn't look the bees knees when you first look at it but it gives you the ability of customizing your OSD um, so you can actually decide you know how much information you want on screen you can decide on the font colors you can decide all sorts of things that a lot of these other flight controllers don't have and that's something for me which is quite nice one of the main things you can actually that the font color as daft as it sounds can be quite important because if you're in a country like England like I am most of the time you've got grey sky if you're in the air um, if you're lucky you might get some blue sky but the trick is you can just simply plug it in via the USB port, which is on the side here, um, bung it into the uh, the firmware, um, for, for firmware update, sorry, and once you've got the latest firmware, you can change all of these settings. So you can actually say, well, today's flight, you know, I'm going to be doing a fairly low distance flight, so I'm going to have lots of... Um, space on my screen so I don't need to have um, I don't need to have my RSSI on I don't need to be able to see the current draw that that's going on um, I don't need to see necessarily the artificial horizon you could say that um, you can remove it and then you can say well, okay well I'm gonna remove it for this flight and then if I want to have it back for the next flight you can go back in there and you can just um, plug the USB into the side of it and you can say right today I'm gonna to do a full-blown long-distance flight I want every piece of information under the Sun I want to know GPS I want to know how many satellites I've got I want to know my RSSI I want to know how many MAH I've got left in my battery um, and also if you look at the sky and you say well it's pretty cloudy and gray today I want my fonts to be nice and clear so you can decide to have a black font knowing that you're going to be flying against a white background most of the time if you've got a uh, blue sky then you might decide you want a different color on it um, little things like that that hopefully and again you know I haven't tried any of this out so I can't state for it but I've obviously seen some stuff online um, all little things that I think will just add to this being a really nice flight controller um, and of course together combined with the fact that it's using the same technology for stabilization as the Eagle Tree Guardian for me hopefully this will work out to be a nice uh, a nice little model so my plan is really I'm gonna leave it at that for the moment um, there's so many features that you can talk about here it will do multi-rotor like I say, it will do fixed wing, um, you know, various different modes, models, um, airframes, everything like that. There's no point in me going into all of them. Um, if you've watched this video and you're intrigued by it, get onto their website, have a look at it, um, have a read of their manual, I would recommend taking a look at that. Don't get too daunted by it, um, but have a look at some of the features. Um, and what I will do is I will try and put a little test rig together with it all, um, with a screen, so I can sort of have a look at what the OSD looks like. Um, I'll also take some screen video um, from my computer so you can see what the software looks like, um, show you how to update the firmware, do the usual stuff that I've done in my other videos basically. And fingers crossed, I will get it fixed to a couple of rigs. Um, the first one is likely to be a Skywalker fixed wing aircraft, which I still have to maiden when the wind stops blowing at 20 miles an hour. Um, and also I'll try and get it onto a multi-rotor so we can see what the multi-rotor performance and the return to home and the auto land and things like that uh, are like. But anyway, that's a, that's a taster of what's hopefully to come. So obviously if you're interested in the Vector, um, by all means subscribe and uh, look forward to seeing some other videos in the future.